Hi, my name is Wouter Hemery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. In this second video with Louis Vermeers, we study the hyper-innovative Lightyear One solar-powered electric car. Just imagine how difficult it must have been to go from the proportions of a solar-powered prototype racer all the way to an aesthetically pleasing and technically impressive production car. Here's how they were involved from the first sketches all the way to the final wind tunnel tests. Enjoy the interview. So basically, I can imagine that you started with a white sheet of paper, front passengers, rear passengers, draw an aerodynamic silhouette, and get started. Is is that how it works? Yeah, almost yes. Of course, we started with some of the with some of the work and research that the team of Lightyear had done. You know, they, they have a lot of uh, yep. expertise in in that solar power uh, system and efficient uh, drivetrains uh, from the very beginning. Uh, we in when we start developing the package, the proportions, how high the car is, how wide the car is, uh, aerodynamics were really on the plate, uh, together with five square meters of solar cells, yeah. and of course together with good ergonomics and and also a, a a good feeling aesthetically in the proportions. For example, um, the solar race cars have a mono volume, like a, a pure teardrop shape. But um, in, it didn't work for the production because uh, you have visibility lines and yes. if you do a teardrop shape, you get an incredible big windshield, which gives you three disadvantages. Is one, glass is heavy, so yep. you should reduce the amount of glass. Secondly, where there's glass, you can't put solar cells, so we couldn't put five square meters in that uh, way. Third disadvantage is that it heats up the inside of the car yeah. and uh, to cool down the car you need extra energy. So there's also the decision to uh, put um, uh, cameras instead of mirrors. And, yeah, um, indeed. There's actually, uh, uh, so we worked together with Lightyear on the development of those mirrors and actually the mirrors improve the aerodynamics on the car. Normally the mirrors okay, are disturbance. Yeah. Uh, of the of the airflow because you kind of detach the airflow quite in the front of the car and in this case the the mirrors actually slightly improve the aerodynamics for example the, the covered rear wheel because we all know that if you cover the rear wheel you just gain in aerodynamics yes and uh, this was from that point of view kind of no compromise uh, car the black stripe around it helped a lot to avoid that uh, you get this feeling that the car is dragging itself. So yeah. um, just by the, the black stripe, you still visually feel the wheel together with the strong shoulder that we gave it. So yeah. those two elements together allowed to stay within the uh, targets of aerodynamics, but aesthetically still have a feeling that the car is pushing itself, is not dragging itself. Indeed, indeed. And then I saw videos lately that the car was tested in the wind tunnel and so on. Um, did you join one of those sessions or, or get the feedback on the results and so on? Unfortunately, I was not uh, uh, here at the time, which I really, really found a pity because I love to be there in, the, in those moments. It's just so nice to see the the smoke move around the the body and so on. My colleagues uh, were there, and uh, you know everybody was super happy with uh, with the results. But uh, yeah, the, the the results were in a way record breaking for a five seat car because uh, you're below uh, uh, zero point twenty, which is I think a very very good uh, result. So that was it for the second part of our interview with Louis Vermeers. Stay tuned for more, because in the next videos we will cover the aerodynamics of future cars and mobility design as a whole. Thanks for watching, see you soon, bye bye.